Hey guys, so we're going to do a little car modeling at a glance, and this is because sub-D car modeling actually takes quite a bit of time. probably don't want to sit here and watch paint dry. We're going to do a lot of pushing and pulling of polygons. We're going to go over setup, how to get the uh, image references set up, and some things to consider while modeling vehicles. Different kinds of ways you can approach situations. Uh, so first up, normally, you want a project folder of some sort. Uh, do this for all your 3D models good habit but create like a models folder a textures folder a reference folder um, in this reference folder I have a couple things I got a mood board so mood board is just a pure ref board right pure refs free by the way so you can go ahead and uh, get something like this going where you drop in images of whatever it is you're building get as many images and references as you can you're gonna want references of everything if you try to do an extremely detailed car model right so you're gonna want to find if possible as many photos of all these different little areas from different angles as well because it's going to help you be able to nail these shapes down and a lot of times you'll be working off of something like this and you're going to have a lot of blank marks or your head when it comes to certain panels and how they're laid out and all that fun stuff like that so a lot of the surface details or other details just don't have the answers okay so with that out of the way um, let's go ahead and Talk about dimensions. Dimensions are pretty important. So do grab dimensions of whatever it is you're making as well. It would be quite useful. Tire sizes, brakes, size of the vehicle, all that can come into play. Pretty much set up good and ready to go. Create a models folder. You're going to name your saves. Uh, the first one, put an underscore zero one, whatever it is you're creating. And uh, this is so you can create or save iteratively, like incremental saves. So if you ever mess up, you can go back if you did. Or we're going to start a new Blender scene real quick. Let's set up these image references. Uh, so first up, this cube. Let's get the dimensions going. Uh, so the dimensions here, pretty simple. Cube on Y, right? It's going to end up being uh, the length. So I'm going to copy the length from the document room. That's a document I made. Right click, create a new document, right? Um, y, paste in the value there. So millimeters, make sure you have the uh, unit that you want. Millimeters, good. And um, width here will be X. So I'm gonna copy it, paste it, done. And height. So you're gonna do a Shift S, uh, cursor to selected. If you don't have machine tools, transform. Oop. Go back to object mode. Object. Set origin to. That's it. This cube, you'll just backspace there. That's all you need to do right there. So as you're orbiting, hit Alt, jump into a side view. Just keep in mind, this isn't meant to be a beginner modeling tutorial or anything. Like that. It's going to get pretty wild pretty quick. Uh, so image, reference, create a new one. Shift A, create. Load up. That reference image, you can see thumbnails of you. Okay. So there you go. And once that's in here, we're going to hit Alt Z to turn on X ray. This is going to be the side view, okay. the right side view. So if you hit tilde key and view right, do that. That's where we're at. Hit Alt while orbiting, you can jump into different views, like the positive X side. All right, so we're just going to line this thing up. I'm not worried about the tires right now. Normally, it would fit mostly inside the box. This reference is a little bit off. Make sure you get good reference because this one, even as good as it is, it kind of falls apart here in the back a little bit, I think. You make sure you have a very accurate reference. Check it thoroughly before you uh, start modeling. But now... Um, so the right side here is mostly set up. Let's do the top real quick. So we take this image reference, we shift D, right click, R, Y, hold control, rotate it 90 degree. Go to the top view. Okay. All we want to do here is it's aligned in the center of the vehicle. So we're just moving it on X, not shifting it on Y. Okay, something like that. That's pretty much good to go. We're going to want to grab this one again. Shift D, right click, RZ, hold control, move this way. 90 degrees. We're going to push this 
And this should be the, I think the rear view. I'm trying to remember which one. I always get them backwards, so we'll just go ahead and place it. Remember, we weren't doing the tires; we were doing the bottom of it. Like oh, and I'd say that's pretty good for. Me. Okay, we're not going to actually um, rotate this one. Take it, Shift D, hit Y, move over. This view now. And we're going to line it up to oh we I think we are moving it X either can't see it all of these have options to them just on uh, right now we have the side set to uh, both that's why it has double sides so if we were to select any one of these and we change it to just say like um, side front only the front side shows you do that on all of these this one we might want back though and so front right and so so happens the one that's back is also back of the vehicle now we can actually line it up okay That's the way I do it. This one's set to the front, then get it backwards. Good. Okay. Oh, you know what? No, I did. I, I did it backwards again. This one we're gonna set. Shouldn't be too hard to uh, fix these. Things. Pretty easy. The struggle is real. All right. So now whenever I'm towards the front side here, and I want to see the front, yeah. that That's how I like to do it anyways. And so also um, positive X happens to be the right side of the vehicle, or the, the left side of the vehicle, actually. OK. And so these here, we can go ahead and go to the settings and turn on opacity. We can drop these. I hit Control-C. I can copy that real quick. I can just turn on opacity and paste. Drop all that down. I don't like them in the center. Some guys, it doesn't bother them. I push them off. It doesn't really matter. It's uh, out of the way now. I don't have to worry about getting all the work. So, still work. But this guy in the middle, you want to go to this panel. Viewport display. I want to change it to uh, wire. Okay. Now all of these we can select them, move them to a new collection, create a collection if you need to. I have a different setup probably. It's an add-on that comes with Blender called Collections. Here we have references. We push them into the references. All there. So by pressing it. So we're pretty much good with our references. I don't want to accidentally click on these and select them by chance, right? So I'm going to select all of them. Go to uh, under visibility. I'm going to hold Alt and click or unclick uh, selectable. Makes them all unselectable. Okay. So now we're at a good point where we can just start modeling. And the way you want to think about this modeling is that there's a couple different kind of techniques you can use. Um, First of all, it's about more of the overall shape than anything else, but you also need to take into consideration where certain things exist. So panel lines, for example, can't come into play quite a bit, door areas. You're probably going to want to have some edges near those things, possibly. Um, some models, or some vehicles, should I say, you can model everything independently. Like you can model the door first, get it just right, and then model the little behind it, and then move on. Uh, with vehicles that are more smooth and curvy and then sharp at the same time in nature. A lot of times it's helpful just to make like the big generic panel pieces first and then combine it all together, get the whole thing going as like a big shell and then um, breaking out the uh, the doors and stuff later on. But you can't break them out very easily if you don't have good topology or good flow. So just keep that in mind. And uh, we're gonna create a plane here, okay? A regular plane. And this plane, put the cursor back to the 
but when I create things, it's always centered. If that's cursor to origin, go into edit mode. This plane, we're just going to start lining up these vertices here. So we can hit Alt Z. Here we're in Alt so we can select through the plane there. Grab these vertices. Subsequently, when we grab vertices, we also grab edges. Press E. Extrude out. So this is contour tracing. A lot of guys like doing contour tracing because it keeps things more accurate. Generally speaking, you're not guessing what you're doing. And you shouldn't guess too much anyways to begin with. If you can't see what you're modeling and you have to guess, then find a reference eventually that area. Stop guessing at it. So give you a more accurate result. So I'm just moving these on X because we've already moved them down into here. Also, you're going to want to have wireframe available to you very easily. Right click here, assign it to a shortcut or hotkey or whatever. Because you, sometimes you just can't see things without it. Okay. Then I'm on. Now, instead of doing this whole vehicle out in one go, what I would prefer to do is contour trace as much as possible. And then um, go to there, go to there. I think this is where we can't see it from the top view. I have a little bit of a problem. If we can't see from the top or the sides or fronts or whatever, we're going to be doing a lot of guessing. So that's a little bit of a problem. This particular panel, it seems that it is marked by these little lines. And this a little bit but then this is also pretty important right that's actually the i think we're this is it tends to be a sharper edge on top of it so sometimes you have to figure these things out and as you're working it can be quite confusing so take your time through it try to push ahead too fast and use uh the minimalist amount of polygons you can sometimes it's quite useful I'll overdo it because you're going for the smooth curves of the surface like this curve here i don't have no idea where this is actually placed might get a little bit of a glimpse from it from the back but not really about the front nope but maybe a little bit right there and so this vehicle there's actually it does something kind of interesting like this part dips back down back here okay so because of that this um this is really hard to follow along with this vehicle but it's doing things like that so subdivide something like that that's what you want you want that smooth surface but try to get it as accurate as possible in just that one area okay and you can move on from there you can work in separate pieces and i'd advise you to do that as well because i could start extruding this edge and just keep working that's fine but the um, the problem is is as we continue to work in this area we're going to eventually run into the point where there's tons of polygons or triangles all over the place and it's going to be very annoying trying to get things accurately so you might want to just take a piece of mesh press p separate the selection and just focus on that one you can press h here to hide this but also notice we're working in the reference area move these to um, the regular collection real quick um, after doing that make sure we just click collection so we create over here from now so we just keep working though. We can hide this piece. So if we hit Alt H later on, we can bring it back. Still keep working. This is a really interesting area. A lot of little details like this. Sometimes you might want to wait on creating them. Other times, you might just want to stop in that area at that given moment because you might want to um, actually model what's going on right here instead of trying to make this work across this whole area. Once you create a plane, go. Oh, I like to leave the origin points in the middle. Have it, I guess, but go straight into edit mode, scale it. We know this is a contour here. We can clearly see it. Part. Okay. Do the larger section. Times less is more. You'll see why here in a second. There. Actually, two parts to this one. Here. Probably what we were looking at, because not very much to look at, right?
Uh, using the gizmo can be also used because you're not constantly clicking or hitting the key. Trust me, Blender will wear out your key. Get a mechanical down through it. That maybe probably follow it all the way down. I'm take a guess, we could. Yeah. Okay. All right. How about this top sec. Maybe not. That one. That's going to have to be here as well. You can try to bring this down if you want, I guess. You can press E. Think about the tires as well. Like, you don't want to line up necessarily. Uh, probably do this as a separate section. I mean, it's really up to you when you uh, decide to do what and where. Sometimes it's you. Yeah, just focus on one little thing and just. Goes there. So obviously would probably become flush right here, so I have the edge into something like that anyway. It appear there's a curve to it. This all looks like it comes out a little bit. Okay there. Beam tools align bottom. Add a loop. Yeah. Remember, you're going to have to, at some point, probably line all of these up with each other. So if you subdivide that, it might look right right now, but you might have more polygons here than you do here. And that could potentially cause problems because you're going to have to, every time you add a loop cut, you're going to have to like, adjust it. Right? Be a little bit careful with what you're doing. All right, so let's say we did a bunch of these. Or I've done that. So go to this one, not that one. Go to this one. All right, so I did a bunch like this. All right, and so what you're going to end up doing is combining these. So it'll be like this one to this one. You'll see. Does it mostly line up? Yeah, because there's an extra edge down here. But um, solve that for now. I don't know. Find out. Uh, that's a big end gun. You can use end guns and triangles, by the way. Just keep in mind that triangles will pinch and end guns will pull apart. Careful with it. the sub D basic kind of bit of knowledge there. This here, we grab this edge, this edge. I'm gonna bridge edge loops. Wait, let me. Oh, this didn't delete all these vertices. Hard to see sometimes. Take the reference. Pretty dark, actually. Pure white, right? Backgrounds. Backgrounds pure. So you can do things like that, and you can dissolve like one edge. You can add a loop cut in the middle and then dissolve the two on the side. Whatever the case. And you start basically merging things together. Finding the issues, delete get rid of nonsense. Combining the panels together. So that's all you're gonna be doing. Stuff like that. So you're gonna do that to the whole model. You're gonna have to figure out a lot of different panels. Start to figure out how to work those panels together basically. Um, try to keep your polygons low for the most part. And can do creases. So if you want to crease edges, come over here, press in. You can do creases if you want something to be a little sharper. That's not unheard of. It's actually quite useful. So what you'll end up at, with at some point, highlighter. Oh. You'll start getting something like this going. All right, it starts to get combined together. Need to make sure this edge flow 
is exactly how you need it to support doing further edits. Okay, but it's going to be kind of an ugly duck stage still. Like it's not perfect, but it's still it's getting there, right? Like you're starting to see some of the things come to life a little bit. You're trying to avoid doing too much detail though. So use as low as polys as possible, and um, can't like you can't work something in at this point. Don't do it. Just simply don't do it. Um, it, like you need to hold an edge or a ridge on something and it just it isn't working out don't do it then okay join it together though keep refining it and as you refine it i keep getting these go to this one after you start refining it a little bit it'll start to make more sense right like i, can, I was able to manage to get some edge flow right here going that wasn't detrimental to the whole thing and uh Got the windows lowered in polygon count so they're a little smoother. You're trying to capture that smoothness across all the big panels is really what you're doing. It's not about any of the details. It just so happens that this vehicle has that really crazy air duct right there. And so this is actually pretty hard to recreate uh, because it makes the vehicle want to, it almost makes it feel like it's a split vehicle in a way. Because you're going to have a little bit coming over a little bit going underneath and then there's all these curves for the ones underneath curves for the up you're gonna have to work that out right at, at some point whether it's right off the bat or if it's later on in the process you're gonna have to work it out so that's probably one of the more difficult spots you'll find on most vehicles something like that anyways okay. just keep that in mind so what eventually will happen is you'll get to a point where you get closer to your end goals your res results you want still have like headlights you need to cut in and all kinds of other fun stuff so you can like duplicate something uh right click convert it to a mesh oh not that one turn the subdivision count down we'll duplicate it hide the original duplicate it and we'll use like a subdivision count of one or maybe just like i showed in my other videos the iterative working process right where you start with the very basics you go to a higher level and then you'll convert it to a mesh, which collapses the subdivision. For that, convert it to a mesh. There we go. And so now you have more polygons to play with. But this is less forgiving now. You're not going to be able to change these panels around a whole lot. You can still modify them quite a bit, but doing things by hand, like coming in here and just doing a little bit of adjustment like this. Um, can get a little carried away sometimes and then you'll really screw up the shading in the surface here so i recommend only trying to use proportional edit doing larger panel sections because um, you're going to want to be able to have everything kind of move on a curve with each other right so you can't make big proportional changes but they need curvature too. and you can isolate too so you could say like that, um, it's this area First, select selected with C. Let's say we just want to work in this area, so we press Shift H, hide everything else. This is in edit mode, so anything we proportionally edit here, Alt H, back, you'll see only that area changed. So we might have some janky edges here, but um, if we subdivide this again, we'll see. This is going to be our result in that area. So. Quite a bit of editing can still take place. That's what I'm trying to hammer home here. I feel like you're stuck in a box, baby. And um, Alt H, make sure it all comes back, right? In edit mode. Uh, so you're gonna want to work on other areas as well, like maybe here. We do a set here, G twice, push up, A M by distance. So things like this, um, you can even potentially like rotate it, put it down a little. Find it a little bit by eye, not too much, but get some kind of result like that going, perhaps, right? Not a big deal. Turn off, uh, turn subdivision off in edit mode. But um, you can do these things. Like you can still use all the sub D modeling tricks you've ever used, but you don't want to make those big panel changes. Proportionally. So, proportional edit off for this one. Select more. Do it an set. Hit O. Do an outset. Might select here. Do an inset. Another inset. 
control. So you can start to cut in some serious details at this level. Density doesn't have to be too, too high. If you had, for example, wanted to wait on creating the uh, sharp edges and things like that, you could have waited until this point. You can grab like um, a row of these. So we're going to do Alt S and just uh, basically scale along normals. We'll piece it up like that. And so now all your sub D tricks come out to play, basically. And so you could take like a single vertex and control V, smooth vertices. Uh, maybe you want to take all of these vertices, smooth them a bit one at a time or as a group, and then just take away one at a time and keep. So you can kind of work edges out like that. There's a lot of stuff you can do. You do want to separate things though around this point. It start happening around here anyways, like window, for example. Probably gonna to wanna to, uh, literally rip it, separate the selection. See, the subdivision will have to match uh, because they're holding their own volumes at this point, basically, curvatures. And so uh, maybe you wanna do, you know, just a small inset and hold control to give the window. Depth of do that. Now you're getting into the detailing aspect of it. Even if you were doing like uh, this little section, you may want to separate this like we did the window. It's a possibility. You may just want to separate it as a new mesh. So you can Shift D, duplicate P, separate the selection. Now you have a new mesh to work on. So you can do like that potentially. Right. You're going to take this up to a high poly. Like, well, it's already pretty high poly, but you're going to add in a bunch of little small details. You're going to still want to wait till later, probably. Those little details. Like, that's probably not going to cut it right there at that point. That, well, something that big would, but I'm just saying, it, you'll probably take it up, viewport, uh, subdivide it once, apply the subdivision. Now, maybe in this area, you could. I don't know, something like a pillars. Right. So you got to do a bunch of those across this whole thing. But probably be the time to do it. Make more. Sense. Don't forget, you can always paint in de extra details in substance paint. Take it to substance. Might not necessarily need to do things like that, but it could be useful. A lot of times, things like the pillars. Window itself, the uh, start adjusting things. Little little differences, else basically. This window exactly, but it'd be somewhere around there. Same process here. I'm gonna um, set it a little bit. Holding Control while inset. Shift to move ever so slightly. Yeah, so probably a little too much. And this one, I think we're going to have to control Z back for this. One. Some guys just make everything off of the base. I don't really. Additional stuff. But... You can always do patches as well. So, like, if you've modeled something already. Like this area is just not working out. You can take this whole section, for the most most part. Uh, you can delete it, and as long as you um, start a new plane, start modeling it. What I would do, I would just simply throw a subdivision on it. I might even turn on end result just to keep it going. Just start working it out. Area. You can see it gets really bendy. This you have to have the additional geometries, but you can start to create your own custom patches in area. Well, it's not always going to give you a great result if you line them up really good, but you could potentially do. Not such a bad deal. Like that. 
tweaks and configuration changes, basically. This matter as well. You want to make sure these, um, you see the little edges in here? You're going to have to pay particular attention to those. You can turn optimal display off. Object mode, you can see the wireframes. You can start to see if these wireframes are going to end up exactly where they end up as well. You have to take all of that into consideration. So this might need an extra loop. Get those wires to start to uh, match up a little bit in that area. Okay. So just keep that in mind. We're going to control Z back real quick. There's another type of patch you could do, which is grid filling. Oh, I guess we can. Let's see if we can grid fill this. Probably not there, but we'll see what happens. Control F, grid fill. Oh, oh hey, look at that. Grid fill surprises me some. So there we go. Yeah, some crazy like that. You could do that. All right. And so you're just going to go through this process, basically. Do every little minor detail that you absolutely need. The blinkers, the headlights, you know, headlights you can do like that. Backwards. Backwards. Bye. Bye. Okay. So. Yeah, headlights you can cut in very quickly. That, right. On a side note, some of the things just don't line up. The headlights here, for example, don't really line up too well. Right. And also, you can see how, like, if we were trying to select things in here, it's like, oh, yeah, stuff in the background. This is when you switch the references over. Um, so this is why you would normally name them. But let's say this is a little bit. Got lucky. But um, this reference, we can change it so that its depth is in front. So it's like having X-ray on, but the model doesn't have X-ray on. So now, get this going on. This is when I usually just pop those over. You can, it tends to work out pretty well. I don't like it on by default normally. Gonna wait until this point. Now we can actually see what's going on in here. Pull Z off. Adjustments as needed to this work out however if you start shifting things around you can see how fast the shading gets kind of screwy and uh, you probably don't want to do that so machine tools add-on it's free get it. it has the surface slide feature it's the same as uh, doing face constraints in 3d studio or Maya or whatever so you can turn this on it adds a temporary shrink wrap to the model more or less what it's doing so now you can actually move these around freely just press g move them around sometimes it's a little finicky like it's kind of weird how it moves sometimes but for the most part, this is going to be pretty phenomenal. You don't want to do anything too rash or too extreme, but you can see right here very quickly, we got what we need. We can turn surface slide feature off. Go ahead and set up exactly the, the shape we need. This one might be a little bit too low res to hold this area or that amount of detail in that area, but it's something you could potentially use at some Keep that in mind. Um, surface slide and machine tools is under the modes pie. When you go into edit mode and you hit the tab key, the modes pie will have surface slide. Uh, you can assign it while the modes pie is on to quick favorites. Okay? So you have to assign surface slide and then finish surface slide to your quick favorites. Then you can turn modes pie off if you don't. All right. Keep that in mind. But all in all, you'll go through a model. It might take you a good chunk of time, especially if you're doing the interior and the exterior, uh, all the wheels and the suspension parts and everything else. You will have to probably find some kind of mechanical drawings of the suspension or maybe even the brake pad or, or whatever. We could probably model the brake pad off of this if we want. But the clappers are... The, clappers, clappers. the um, Those things there, whatever they are, they are uh, going to be... Uh, we're probably going to want more references, to be honest. They're going to be pretty hard to model off of a 2D drawing that, that like that. So also like interior elements. Do take your time finding references because some things, especially when it comes to texturing, can be extremely important as well. So I believe these are carbon ceramics, right? Maybe there's something that were different. These are going to have like a little sheen to them that's very different than quite a lot of other metals. 
this is all carbon fiber for the most part. You can't see it for the most part in this image. That's the downside of a photography is when you try to photograph something like this. A lot of these exotics, they have very minute little details in them that you will simply not see unless you're there in person. Um, so if you ever get a chance to actually go walk around the vehicle, if you get a chance to go take your own photos, do it. Highly recommend it. It's going to help out a lot. If that's a possibility for you, think about it. Uh, go do it. And it'll save you a huge amount of headaches trying to uh, make this thing more believable. Because you'll be able to get all the angles, all the references. You are. It's totally worth it. And if you have never gone to like a Cars and Coffee Club or Cars and Coffee meetup or whatever, do it. Go to a Cars and Coffee. There's guys that come out there with all kinds of crazy nonsense. I don't know if I've seen one. I have not seen one. Um, I was trying to think if they actually... Um, I'm pretty sure these there are a couple of these have shown up at a Cars and Coffee before. Probably had ropes around it, to be honest. <laughs> this is kind of a, one of those vehicles. You'll oftentimes find like Bugattis and stuff you can go take photos of. Just ask the owners. They kind of just take reference photos to create like, graphics. Or They'll probably be like, yeah, sure. And you can ask them how you made so much money, too. I'll probably tell you. They do, by the way, honestly. And so, um, yeah, there you go. So that is the. Um, the trick about vehicles and um, this here is this is known as the um, this little thing here inside the vehicle this is so that the um, the hot girl sitting in the side seat doesn't have to see their sugar daddy that's what that's called the sugar daddy blocker and it's a joke it's joking anyways so Anyways, that's it for that one. We're going to go ahead and leave that alone. I'm pretty sure that's just a thing so you don't hit heads inside of the vehicle. I think people died doing that before. Anyway, so, um, yeah, hopefully some of these tips helped you out. I really I don't have the time to commit to the full car project right now, not like not one like this. The shading is extremely important, though. Let me reiterate how important this is. Use Material Preview as well. Okay. So set up an HDRI file. I think most of these are on HDRI Haven for the most part, except I'm using a Substance Studio one. You can make these in Substance as well. Um, but the thing is, is that you know, some kind of like realistic, somewhat, this isn't really, looks like plastic, but the, the thing is, is that, you know, just get some like paint on it, basically, right? Get some red paint. You can actually, um, oh, you can't do it. You can do it in Substance. You can't do it. Dang it. So. Can't snag the color from the image on the other side. But anyways, try to set up a realistic color and then um, try to set up the material just be pretty smooth. Not perfectly smooth, but pretty smooth. Yeah, a nice HDRI file going so you can see reflections in the surface. So you can kind of tell what's going on with the topology here. This is this HDRI is probably not that good. Some of them work out really well. See contours all day. A lot better than using a matte cap in my most guys will use matte caps, that's fine for like modeling, but this is gonna kinda especially if you use an environment. Environments to about quite a bit. Lower ones. It's so many reflections. Can be overwhelming a little bit, right? Oh, and that background image, you can sometimes it just I just want to turn the whole collection off. So this shading, what you're gonna be looking for, one of the biggest problems with shading in here, anyways, is um if you set this geometry up correctly, you shouldn't see too many times where um like a shading line accelerates exponentially. Like it should kind of gradually move through. But occasionally you'll see that it like just jets off, right? Like it takes off too fast. Um, that's usually because it's just when you created the geometry for some reason. I don't know exactly what happens, but the, the shading there, um, the topology layout is either too dense or too loose compared to something else next. Just doesn't like it. Also, 
keep in mind when you use weird things like triangles, it affects the shading quite a bit. Uh, sometimes there's no fix for that. So try to avoid triangles, specifically the poles. Try to avoid them if you can. It's not always advisable to have them around. Even on a high poly, this will still influence that shading quite a bit. Okay, and they'll be noticeable sometimes. But from back here, not really. It's just going to be, I guess it depends on like um, how precise you need the model, right? How, much, how detailed does it actually have to be? Anyways, uh, so one other thing I want to touch on, and then we'll end this video, is that when you are done modeling something like this, for the most part, if it's a game model specifically, uh, game models are going to be still fairly high poly, believe it or not. And so, you know, something like this might be what you're looking at, maybe even a little more, perhaps. I don't know. Um, but there's going to be a lot of polygons added from the additional little details you had, right? So here's the thing. Like this density, anyway. Think of this density, maybe a little bit higher. Okay, here's the thing about it. If we got rid of this subdivision, and this was our mesh and it was baked onto it, cool. Uh, you want to add damage to these things. So I just want to point out there's something called shape key. All right. And so shape keys you can animate and you can actually bring in the game engine. I haven't tried it to Unreal Engine yet, but I'll be doing it later probably. And so uh, shape keys create like a base shape key. And then you can create another one and set the value to one. The clay strips here. Okay, we're in sculpt mode right now. Tab sculpt, sculpt mode. Just to point out, a lot of those damages you see in video games, you're going to probably sculpt them a little bit, maybe. Not entirely. You might model quite a bit of it. It's like we can't really do much with this headlight area right now. But uh, good odd chance you can add damage to your model in this manner. Shape keys allow you to do that in like a animatable way. I guess. So you can basically call these after certain collisions and stuff. Right? And so you end up with something like this. Now you're at a front end collision or tires bumped or something. I don't know. But you can see all that in game as an end. All right. So that's useful. All right. Might want to do it. Get rid of them. On a flip side, just thinking of something when this headlight was. Not sure what it was. A lot of times headlights are separate. On this for certain vehicle, it looks like it's separate behind the panel. Like it's somewhere in here. So you might still get away with just like separating the headlight. Oh, yeah. That's what it was about, separation. Um, so if this was subdivided, it would look like Anyways, the trick here is that uh, all your panels you want to split at some point, right? More than likely. There's there's a reason why, well, on some boxier models, vehicles, right? You can separate later, or you can separate from the beginning and model everything separately. So you could do that potentially. On some vehicles, like uh, if the panels are supposed to be real tight together and they have a really nice flexion that's supposed to continue through the panels, so it happens that a lot of exotic sports cars are like that. So even regular cars these days are like that quite a bit. So uh, panels are much tighter than they used to back in the day, right? You're going to want to separate out these meshes to create the door, things like that keep that in mind you can see i have this selection here of this loop so i did a um let's go over that again i did a bevel no segments just uh like a chamfer this creates a loop all the way around selection usually you do a full selection all the way around right then uh you could do a loop cut right in the middle of it if you want to or you could just bevel and then uh mouse hold up once but this uh, loop cut, you can do select loops, uh, inner loop region, usually, not in this case. Um, 
but that'll usually select everything inside of it. So what we'll have to do since I'm a knucklehead and I didn't actually select the loop. I have to go through this. Let's turn this off in edit mode. I causing problems. Thinking of here, this, right? I need to select that next section. So we'll select more, control sh number pad plus, and separate selection. Both subdivide now. Okay. And Blender crashes. Lovely. Perfect timing, Blender. Autosave should have maybe had the loop, I think. We'll see. If you ever have a crash, just keep this in mind. Recover, last session. Oh, not, not last session. Recover, autosave. The last date. Okay. Let's see what we have here. See? Right to that point. So let's try doing control shift click here. A little faster. Control shift is shortest path fill selection. Nice. But we could separate this area potentially. Alt S real quick, push it in. Select less, Alt S, push it back out. Select more. There we go. Back where we were. All right, so if that was subdivided, that could be our door panel. Essentially, we may may have wanted to Let's isolate it because we have a basically a loop on the edge. Right? We could do an inset and hit inset and hit O. Slight outset, edge rail it. Okay, and that'll give us a little bit of a nicer edge to it. You see what's going on? So this is gonna look a lot nicer than this one over here. Turn this off in edit mode. The outset a little bit. Okay, so that's a really tight panel. A really tight uh, door theme might be what you want. Fairly believable. Let's see how it looks with a little bit of shading on it. Should see a continuity lines here to some extent. It doesn't always have to be perfect. It depends on the vehicle. A lot of times, exotics, it's pretty much perfect. It's close to it, so. Depends on the, the price tag, I think, but. If you run into shading issues, you might have to do, might still have to do a weighted normal. Kind of weird, but yeah. Do the weighted normal kind of corrected that one. Yeah. Means you're gonna use shaded auto smooth, but keep in mind, do an auto smooth. Don't actually use auto smooth let's go full strength you see it kind of took us back to where we were um, and this is where the weighted normal comes into play you use face influence and you could potentially set everything as all in weak medium or strong and but maybe that loop you want this particular area you might want it to be weak or something I don't forgot which one it is that influence at the moment. Face influence. How that works. All right, that didn't correct it very much. Try making this one well. This also can affect your baking. There we go. They're not perfect in real life, but they're very close to. You see, that's a lot better than what maybe we once had. Looking at this little line here. 
So yeah, you could try doing that. You could try setting everything. Maybe even set these wrong. You'll have to play with it and just figure out what works. I think strong seems. Wrong here. It's a little slight off. It's not too, not really too bad. Right. So now we got some good shading too. Anyways, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching and um, hope you learned some things. All right. I'll check you guys out in the next one. All right. Take care.